Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week, here on In-Depth Outdoors. Oh, yes, big walleye, super taker. <laughs> big fish. Oh my goodness, bad monster, monster pocket. <laughs> We are headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Got him. All right. That's what smallmouth fishing is all about right there. This is In-Depth Outdoors. My guess is you're thinking to yourself, what are these guys doing? We've been trying to do these shows in real time, uh, film them the same week, then air them, so the content's real current. And of course, we made the switch from ice to open water here a couple weeks ago. It's real hard to find a place to float a boat in the Midwest. But we found a spot. We're here on uh, Pool 4. Mississippi River here at Red Wing. Great midwinter bite. The river's always open. The ramps here at Everett's Resort are always cleared off so you can get your boat in on the water. Any day it's warm enough. Today I'm gonna to be fishing with Eric Rayberg. And it's a bit of a homecoming, so to speak, for me. This is where I guided for over a decade full time, so I don't get down here near as much as I used to. Love being down here though, so it should be a good show. Great early, early season open water walleye action right here on the Mississippi River, Pool Fort, Red Wing. So if you're interested, pay real close attention because you can be putting your boat on this body of water here in a few days. You know, we figured we could have done this, this show on like a nice sunny day, but it just feels more fitting uh, to be out here in the snow on a day, of course, when nobody else is going to be here because they're all home shoveling the driveway. Something I don't approve of. What's that now? Staying home oh, to yeah. shovel the driveway when one could be fishing. Are you kidding me? I'm picking something up off the floor yet. That was first cast. It ain't a big fish, but uh, that's the way to start it. Get this control on here. So the answer to your question, why would a couple of guys drag a boat down in a snowstorm to fish the Mississippi River? Well, we're gonna do this all day long. Uh, you know, early bird gets the worm, and when you're one of those first boats out on pool four in the winter, you get here before the traffic gets real heavy, you're gonna catch fish. We'll talk more about the technique we're using and how to pull it off yourself, but it really is so easy. I believe uh, the expression, it's like falling off a log. And there you go. Guy was gonna keep and eat one, that'd be the one. Everybody's always so worried about, do you need live bait in the winter? The fish are lethargic. Are you kidding me? Look at that. You might wanna check your other rod, James. Oh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> <laughs> so what is today? Today is the 22nd of February. This bite will only get better. The numbers aren't going to get any better. What you're going to see today is just a parade of fish, but you're going to see more and more and more big fish. Oh, doubled up. Eric's got one. I've got one. Good grief. Gulp. These fish do all the work for a guy. You know, not all plastics are created equal. You want a plastic that's got a real good tail action at low speeds. Uh, if you're jerking your rod or snapping that plastic this time of year or fishing it too fast to get that bait to move, you're not gonna catch fish. But if you can find the right plastics, like these Bee Fish and Tackle Moxies that do a great job, have a great action at slow speed, you're gonna just catch fish after fish just like Eric's got going now. Nice. I got one here in my hand. I got another one on the bottom of the boat. I'm going to slide this one down your line. Yeah, that fish isn't going anywhere. That's the way to start it out, man. Very nice. It's going to be a wet hand day. I hope so. That's, a, that's usually a good thing if it is. Oyster shell? Yeah, that one was on the oyster shell. You can see he just, just inhaled that oyster shell. and It's a, a, common, a common thing with this dragon bite. They, when they commit, they're there and they mean it. People are always trying to overthink this dragon bite, trying to make it be more complicated than it is, but it is the easiest technique. If you want to come out here and catch some fish on the river, 
bring a needle nose pliers yes, and have at definitely. it. Definitely, <laughs> definitely a nice fish to start the morning. We've been maybe 10, not even 10 minutes out here and had to double right away and good way to start the morning. I got the short end of that deal. <laughs> oh, this, this isn't so bad, man. <laughs> Try the hands off and get the gloves back on. About ripped your plastic right off, he hit yep. it so hard. Nice thing with fish and plastics, instead of live bait, and no going in the minnow bucket, and thread the plastic back on, you're ready to roll. One of the wonderful things about these new trolling motors, run them from anywhere in the boat. About uh, 0.9? Yeah. Work for you, work for me. We're going to use a technique today called dragon, and it is just as the name implies. Easy cast behind the boat, close the bale, drag it. Fish will do the rest. It's that easy. Now I'm going to be honest with you, running two rods and then trying to run the boat by hand is going to be a little weird. No, there they are. There's a little better one. That was uh that, that was, was a definitely a, a wake up hello. A little better fish. There's a lot of fish right on that break here. Oh, come here, girl. Nice, healthy, fat, thick fish. Can't ask for much more. You can't ask for a fish to hit it any harder. <laughs> no, no. When you set the hook because they, they scare you, that's when you know they hit it hard enough. That wasn't a half bad uh, first little uh, start there. First hundred yards. Uh -huh. Can't complain about that of innovative designs with proven fish catching colors. The result, Be Fish and Tackle's Authentex Plastics. The Moxie, with its thin profile, beefy belly, and long tail moves and vibrates at slow speeds more than any other plastic on the market today. The perfect cure for cold front walleye. The Pulsar features a paddle tail that twitches and kicks seductively when fished super slow. Producing more body movement than any other paddle tail style bait. Find them online at BeFishandTackle.com before your fishing buddies do. This just in. Search now over for one suspect found hiding under a brush pile. Suspect was taken into custody and released this afternoon. Officials credit the apprehension to the new Markham underwater camera technology, which found and caught the suspect. Markham has really taken the lead with their on-screen displays for temperature, depth, and direction, helping you get to the fish quicker. In other news, a missing walleye was captured today, once again caught red-handed on a Markham camera. Stay tuned for more news from the Markham Underwater Network, where we seek, find, and capture the lake's most wanted. <laughs> Feels good to be back, Eric. I don't get down here near enough anymore. Fish on. It's a special place, that's for sure. Should be a solid fish. So what's the secret to this dragon? Why do you choose dragging over vertical jigging? It's the most finesse, subtle way to present these baits. And we're also in shallow water. The water's pretty clear. So there's a combination of factors that make vertical jigging far less effective than this dragging. Guy could come in here and sit right over the top of these fish, and because of the fact that the water's clear, you're gonna spook the fish that are in real shallow water out front of the boat. And even though you think that you're doing a great job of subtly presenting your bait, when you're jigging, you're moving that bait up and down in the water column, you're giving it a lot more motion than we're giving it by simply just pulling it through the water column. Look what I've got. I mean, if a guy was gonna keep fish, I have no problem keeping fish. I'm not real excited to uh, start putting fish in the live well this early in the day. Nice 14, maybe 15 inch fish, just perfect eater. The river is full of them. Uh, the growth rates here are so high that these fish achieve a size like this in just a matter of two, three years. So they're a very renewable resource here on the Mississippi River. Minn Kota, making it cool to be the backseat driver. Uh oh! A little bit better than your average eater. He's not bad at all. 45, 50 minutes from the Twin Cities, that ain't half bad. It has been so long since I fished down here. I think the last time I fished down here in the spring, I got a 13.8 pound walleye. I think I've found Dinkville. I'm the mayor of Dinkville right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dinky town. Oh, this one isn't so bad. Oh, good solid eater. If we had a mind to. Come here, buddy. You know, I take it back. That's not a bad fish. If I've insulted him, hurt his feelings, I apologize. 
Nice little guy. What we're doing here now is, you know, we found this spot along this path that we were dragging. We were finding just so many of our fish just clustered right here that we've taken the trolling motor, thrown it on spot lock, that uh, electronic anchor. We're just letting that uh, trolling motor hold us right here in this spot so we can kind of fan cast around. And we're trying to fish these jigs a lot like they would work if you were dragging them, just crawling them back. Not a lot of rod tip motion. And once these fish stop biting here, we'll move on. Hey, hey. There's at least one fish down here. It's just starting to mark them. You know, we can't go just anywhere and catch fish today, but almost. I don't think we stopped anywhere and not caught anything. No. It's a walleye. Oh, there's a butt hook set. <laughs> I'll be happy to lend a hand. More of them same meters. Yeah. They're hitting it about the same. That are pretty well swallowed. I grabbed the right rod. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. I'll take that one. You got her? Surely do. That's a nice fish. That's a fat mama. You know, sometimes you grab the right rod, sometimes you grab the, right, <laughs> the wrong rod. That was definitely the right rod for me. Nice fish. Just coming down that stair step of sand. Just getting, you know, gradually deeper. Coming down here into the main channel. Beautiful fish. Fat, healthy, great colors. Got an attitude that we just love. There we go. Sweet mama. She's already swimming. Gone. Thank you, Eric. Mm, Any time. Okay. I'll hold you to it. It's got to retie me. What happened? Ooh, ooh. Did you just get hit? I just got nailed. Right behind the boat. Pulling line in. Well, that would have been a fun little that tussle. Would've, that would have been interesting. That would have been interesting. Hello, I'm Dave Markworth. I'd like to introduce you to the Skeeter Boat Center in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. At the Skeeter Boat Center, we carry the Midwest's largest selection of Skeeter fishing boats, all at prices you can afford. And we offer test drives on most models in stock. Our highly trained staff will provide you the personalized service that you deserve. So check us out at SkeeterBoatCenter.com, where our goal is to help you have fun fishing. At Skeeter Boats, our passion for turning great ideas into even better fishing boats has produced an unmatched lineup of models intended to fit the way you fish. Like the WX series, designed to handle big water in tough conditions, including the new MX1825, built from the ground up to be the ultimate 18-foot fishing boat, and Skeeter Bass Boats, setting the standard for speed and fishability. Skeeter, engineered like no other. What's going on, buddy? Hit a quiet spot. <laughs> we caught one in two minutes. <laughs> well, I can tell you this, the uh, electronics, the hummingbird is telling us that uh, no fish down there right now. Or at least not like there was up there by the little sand island. There was a mountain of them up there. If the fish don't bite, we'll have a snowball fight. <laughs> I think if we drag this down again, we're gonna come alongside of that sand and then just turn out and catch that channel edge more than anything. I think we got way too shallow that last pass. We're coming up on that sand now. I would imagine you'll start seeing fish here in just a little bit. Not a monster by any means, but. Well, let me tell you, shallow is definitely better. I mean, we kind of got up there in that 11, 12 foot of water stuff and a lot more action. That ain't a bad fish. Your drag says you can barely get him in here. <laughs> just enough to get over the hump. Right on top of the snow, right where we like them. Nice, nicely eater fish there. We're coming into the kill zone. And we finally picked up another boat. Red Wing Pool 4 was not all ours for the entire day. We've got one other boat out there. You know, if people come on down here and give this a try, they should expect good fishing. They should not expect to have the river all to themselves. <laughs> no, that's a pretty rarity this time of year. Fish on. <laughs> this is such a fun bite. And it just keeps getting better and better. These fish that are 16 inches right now, 17 inches on average. We'll go to 20, 22s, 23s, and then when you get to the peak of the spawn, you're running into so many big fish. 
it's not uncommon to have multiple fish in that eight, nine, 10 pound range in a day if you really kind of have your program dialed. But right now, down here on the river, what it's about, it's about ridiculous quantities of very aggressive fish willing to eat plastics. Come here, buddy, another great eater. Whole bait, right in the mouth. I mean, there's just nothing left there. Completely inhaled that bait. That's that bee fishing tackle, Authentics Plastics. The actual model is called the, uh, the Moxie. It's a fairly large plastic, just got great action at slow speeds. Here's one thing you're gonna wanna know, keep an eye on. If you were to put this same bait on a heavier jig head, what you're gonna see is a lot of short strikes. And guys will think, ah, the fish aren't really aggressive today, they don't really want the bait that I'm offering. And that's really not true. Uh, when you think about how a walleye feeds, he comes up behind the bait, closes his gills, creates a suction, and tries to pull that bait into its mouth. And if you've got this plastic pin down there on a 3 8 ounce head, it doesn't move. So what you feel is this, doink, and there's no fish there. Lighten up that jig weight. And that's what we've done here with this presentation. We've gone to the extreme. That's a 3 32nd ounce jig head, slightly heavier than 1 16th of an ounce. And we're fishing that down in 20 feet of water. And how we're able to do that is by controlling our speed very carefully. Uh, we're using the um, Minn Kota trolling motor to pull ourselves downstream about a tenth to two tenths of a mile an hour faster than drift speed. So we're barely crawling along, just a little bit faster than we'd go if we just stopped the motor altogether. So this will find bottom, it'll bounce along the bottom, moves very slowly, looks very, very natural. Enough yakking, more fishing. Oh, did you get one from Dinky Town? Mm, but they're average. I think the future looks bright for Pool 4. Not a bad little fish. You know, so far today we're catching eaters, but this is a marvelous big fish technique. It's something that when I was guiding down here was kind of a mainstay of our, our fishing early in the season, start in March and go through the spawn into April. Eric and I are both fishing two lines right now. We're saturating the water column. We're doing so in a very efficient manner. We're getting lots of baits in front of these fish and they're very natural. You think about a wounded or a dying bait fish that gets washed through the dam over my shoulder here. It's just drifting nice and subtly, hardly moving through the water as it just drifts along in the current. And that's what the fish are used to feeding on. So the more closely you can match that presentation, the more effective you're gonna be. And this presentation, this jig dragging presentation, just matches it to a T. A pair of innovative designs with proven fish catching colors. The result, Be Fish and Tackle's Authentex Plastics. The Moxie, with its thin profile, beefy belly and long tail moves and vibrates at slow speeds more than any other plastic on the market today. The perfect cure for cold front walleye. The Pulsar features a paddle tail that twitches and kicks seductively when fished super slow. Producing more body movement than any other paddle tail style bait. Find them online at BeFishAndTackle.com before your fishing buddies do. Hello, I'm Dave Markworth. I'd like to introduce you to the Skeeter Boat Center in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. At the Skeeter Boat Center, we carry the Midwest's largest selection of Skeeter fishing boats, all at prices you can afford. And we offer test drives on most models in stock. Our highly trained staff will provide you the personalized service that you deserve. So check us out at SkeeterBoatCenter.com, where our goal is to help you have fun fishing. Look at this cluster of fish. Holy smokes. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> it's gonna get good. Got him. Not a big fish, but uh, not a resident of Dinky Town either. Eric's got one. A little better fish. Nothing. Yeah. Nice 17 inch fish. Back he goes. That was a big pot of fish. Nothing huge, but high teens maybe. Oh, that's solid. That makes up for the fact that we didn't quadruple out of that big mess of fish. Yeah, well, sometimes it's a little better if we don't. Looked right on the tip of the nose there. Oh, fish, fish, other rod, other rod. You just got crushed. <laughs> Nothing much simpler than a plastic on a light jig and fish do the rest for you. <laughs> so to kind of answer the question, when do these fish start to show up here on the Mississippi River below these dams? You know, uh, very often guys won't even start to show up to fish these areas till April. Uh, trust me, the fish are here and just to really carry that point home, we dropped a Markham underwater camera down and just made a short pass, maybe about uh, 100 feet. You will not believe the walleyes 
that are here already. Oh boy, you're coming into them now. Uh -huh. <laughs> about four or five on the camera right there. Uh, you know, they talk about that spawning run and a lot of people think that doesn't happen until you start to get real warm weather and some influx of, you know, fresh water from snow melt. But uh, these fish are already here and they're here in just huge numbers. We might not have the size here yet, but as far as quantity goes, it is wall to wall walleye down there. Get just up onto that little sand flat there and fish and, everywhere and there the fish are and everything from walleyes to red horse to basically anything the river holds these fish are all feeding on the same things they're all feeding on shad and uh, the baits that have this uh, real good movement action in the water at real slow speeds of course work for all species right now water temperatures are real cold uh, they're about 38 degrees so real active aggressive baits don't work but you do want some movement at slow speed now, this is that uh, authentic plastic it's called the moxie this is a four inch version purple chartreuse seems to be the killer today there's that real cool tail there you get that thing in the water and she just kicks you no know, i was feeling pretty good about her how her day was going so far james but after i put this camera down it I don't, I don't know, it looks like just about anybody could do it. I hear you, I feel you. It's, it's amazing that you're just not catching them, you know, constantly one right after the other with that number of fish down there. Yeah, the number, I mean, it, it's very humbling, the, the, the amount of fish that are actually down there. Sometimes it's better off just not knowing. <laughs> I would agree. So we're gonna go downstream just a little bit. Let's see if we can't find some of the- Hey! Nothing to get real excited about. Help me out, buddy. <laughs> I can do it. Boy, this is a limber stick there, boy. Got it. Got her. Teamwork. Boy, did that thing schmuck it. Whew. Triple. Kind of, sort of. Double for sure. It's very difficult to do more than really two at a time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if a guy uh, shows up here and if you, if you can't catch walleye here, not looking good. <laughs> There's so many fish. Oh. Just inhaled it. There we go. That would make 15, but not much more. See you later, bud. I thought that fish was going to be so much bigger. I mean, he just crushed my jig. What we've done now is we've got these fish fairly isolated. We're in that last hour of the day, basically. And instead of dragging now, we've just basically taken the electric, used the spot lock, which is the electronic anchor, just holding in this small area, peppering casts up here in the shallow water. The fish have definitely moved very shallow now. Uh, boat sitting right now in nine foot of water and I'm casting towards shore. Jig hardly made it to the bottom, so we've upsized our jigs a little bit. No need to go so, sh or so light, uh, even though we're up there up shallow, gives us good control over the jig. Fish are aggressive, so they're just smacking the baits. Hey! Eh, mine's not too bad. A little better than the meter size. Heavy head first cast. <laughs> Double. I don't think you're gonna lift him. Feels a little heavy for your lift job. You can do it! <laughs> you're in the corner of the mouth again. Feels like a decent fish. Yeah? Yeah. Like, not a world beater, but. Nice fish. Nice, fat, healthy fish. There we go to see another day. Come here, buddy. I can't claim to deserve any more fish today. I'm gonna keep throwing until they stop biting. <laughs> That's a nice fish. I've got a long history fishing down here on the Mississippi River. This is, of course, where I cut my teeth as a fishing guide. And all you have to do is just take a look at that underwater footage, and you'll get a real strong feeling for why this is one of the best walleye fisheries in North America. Uh, you get big fish, uh, 12, 13, 14 pounders, not all the time, but they happen. But it's the number of fish in this body of water that really is just mind blowing. Now you take a look at that underwater footage, and you've got walleyes literally stacked like cordwood. Now this is one of the times when uh, that saying is actually true. And what makes it even more impressive is that these fish are so fat and heavy. Uh, these aren't like uh, you know thin northern Minnesota walleyes that are just kind of eking out a living. Uh, there's so much food in this system. Everything's very healthy, very fat. 
and the numbers. It's just mind blowing. Of course, it's not always easy to catch these fish. You'd think that with that many fish around, you'd be able to just catch fish one right after the other, but that's not the case. Uh, there's so much food, there's so many shad in this system that it can be quite the trick to actually get them in the boat. We've done all right today though. Can't complain. Over the next few weeks, you'll just start to see more and more adult females kind of roll in. But right now, if I have to be content catching almost limitless numbers of these 17 to 21, 22 inch fish, it's a pretty good day. Hey, this is such a fun bite. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at In Depth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.